Sadako Sasaki was only two years old when an atomic bomb was dropped on her hometown, Hiroshima. When Sadako was just 12 years old, her neck and ears started swelling. A year later, her legs began to form purple spots. Soon after, she was diagnosed with leukemia and given a year to live. Because of her illness, Sadako spent all her time in the hospital. Her friend told her to start folding origami paper cranes. She was motivated to create these because of the Japanese legend that if you make a thousand origami cranes, you would be granted one wish. Sadako's wish was to be able to live. Sadako folded paper cranes using anything she could get her hands on, like hospital papers and lolly wrappers. She soon became too weak to fold any and passed away. Sadako achieved the number of 644 cranes. After she had passed away, her friends and family helped her reach the thousand mark by folding the rest of the cranes. Some of these cranes were buried with her and some have been donated around the world of important places such as the 9-11 Memorial, Pearl Harbor in Hawaii and some museums. In 1977, Sadako's story was written as a children's historical novel by Canadian-American author Eleanor Coer. Today, the book has and still is used in primary schools for peace education. The origami crane has also become a symbol of peace. To immerse myself into this culture a little more, I've decided to learn how to make a paper crane as well as a few other pieces of origami. Origami is a Japanese word that can be broken up into two parts. Ori meaning to fold and kami means paper. Origami started around the time Buddhist monks had carried paper to Japan from China during the 6th century. During this time, origami was only used for religious ceremonies because the price of paper was high. The closest experience I would have with origami would be knowing how to make a fortune teller where you write down colours and numbers as well as knowing how to make your basic sailboat and hat. However, I do not have any experience with the traditional forms of origami like the paper crane and lotus flower. Intricate forms of origami seem complex and difficult to master compared to folding a paper boat. Nonetheless, I will have a crack at it. First, I will watch a YouTube video on how to make the basic paper crane. Practice this a few times and then learn how to make the more advanced looking crane. Finally, I will attempt to make a lotus flower. After learning how to make these origami pieces, I realised that not only is it seen as an art, but as an avenue for mental and physical exercise. I looked into this and found that origami aids in your hand-eye coordination and mental skills. The use of my hands had directly stimulated areas of the brain. While making these pieces, I was also concentrating on my carefulness with each fold and crease, and once completing a piece, I felt quite calm. Origami can be therapeutic.
When I first started this project, I thought origami was an art form. However, since learning how to fold myself, I discovered it can be great for your mindfulness and a form of meditation. After learning that the Buddhist monks had brought origami to China and how it can be seen as something more spiritual, I was able to create a link between these two elements. It is known as unwrapping the origami of the Eightfold Path. The Eightfold Path is something that is followed by someone who wants to attain the state of the sages, Nirvana. This word nirvana reminded me of a poster we have on the back of the toilet room door. The poster is of the Dalai Lama talking about nirvana. Anyway, I discovered that the practice of Buddhism surrounds the Noble Eightfold Path. The Eightfold Path is very much like a prescription that the Buddha would write out in order for us to cure ourselves of an illness. An illness such as anxiety or stress. This is called Dukkha and you can end Dukkha through the Eightfold Path. described to be like origami in reverse, revealing your true nature, a crane to just a piece of paper. As you can see, there is a lot more to origami. It is not just about folding paper and turning it into something beautiful. Origami is seen as a symbol of peace as well as a metaphor for Buddhism practice, something I would not have realised if I hadn't experienced origami myself. It is a practice I would definitely recommend for everyone to learn. <laughs>